Tom here from Warren Systems and FreeNAS 11.3 was released on January 28th, 2020. Today is February 8th, 2020, and we're going to talk about the release and all the updates related to it. If you want to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you want to hire us for a project, there's a hire us button at the top. Or if you just want to reach out, there's a forums where I spend some time replying and chatting with people. Also, if you want to help the channel out in other ways, there are affiliate links down below that get you deals on services and products we talk about on this channel. But free NAS is free. You can go ahead and download this. Uh, you don't need any special affiliate link to get that going. So free NAS 11.3 has been released. I talked about it in the release candidates. Uh, I started trying it in release candidate. And then once it went full release, updated my systems. I wanted to wait a week before I did a video so I could, you know, talk about that it works. And yes, I haven't had any problems. A few highlights, the re-implemented replication engine. That was cool. That was the only, not really problem, but it didn't copy my replication over from the old version to the new. It gave an error. I just deleted the replication and started it over again, which was perfectly fine because the way they did it now is a lot easier. Now, I have promised and I will get to a separate video on the ACL manager. This has been really nice. It offers a lot more control over permissions, which is a vexing problem for many people. Also, I did a video on the SMB shadow copies are now enabled by default on shares. This is another great feature uh, where the VSS is as it's presented to a Windows system and shares. It looks like volume shadow services. Um, so you can look at a snapshot and see it right from Windows. I talked about that and did a video on it last time. That's a great feature. The iSCSI wizard is really nice. Alert system overhaul. Dashboard updates. Um, they're, nice polish on the dashboard, I'll just say that. Uh, NAS support for plugins. Eliminates the need for each plugin to have a dedicated IP address on your network. I haven't really tested that much, but I think that's a neat feature they added that in there. Um, featured, full featured 2.0 API includes REST WebSocket connection. Allow FreeNAS to be fully scripted and driven from the same API used for the web interface. This is a really nice backend feature for those people that are going to create customizations on top of it. I, so I think this is going to be a really cool um, in the future where we see more people plugging away and coming up with different ways to manage FreeNAS. Large pool creation assistance when creating ZFS pools with a large number of disks. The UI provides automated way to repeat a VDEV layout across remaining disks. Now, I just did a video about laying out ZFS and VDEVs. Um, it's kind of related to all this, too, because this question comes up as well of how do I lay out all these disks and what's the most efficient or what's going to be the most performance way to do that. Uh, performance optimization across the board, many different workloads. Yeah, nice stuff to hear. If you want to dive into some of the rad of that, you can follow the ZFS uh, dev vlogs and things like that if you want to get into the finer details of it. Always back up before you upgrade. That's important. But let's talk about, um, I did back up, I did upgrade, it works great. So this is what the interface looks like on the FreeNAS Mini E 3.0. I did a review of this and people hammered on the keyboard talking about how underpowered this system was. And I like it. I took this one. This is a VPN over back to my house where it is sitting and chilling out, um, quietly running a few things that we'll talk about. So the upgrade went perfectly fine on this. The replication is not something I use on this one. I'll talk about that in the other one. But let's talk about plugins and services because I still think this is a great home box for people that want an turnkey out of the box, just works type system. So let's go over here to the plugins, which this is a big deal. They did revamp the plugins for the new 11.3. They got the AG system ones and then the community plugins right here. And yes, because you're, for those of you that were uh, feel vindicated to say, yes, isn't that taking a little bit of time to load time? Yes, it does. Uh, that is the nature of this. I'll grab some coffee real quick. I didn't have to edit that. I just want to drink a coffee. Uh, that's, I just want to show that is a little bit slower on this, and you'll see on the other system it's a lot faster. But uh, they have the community plugins and are redoing how they do this so the community can easier, makes it easier for the community to contribute plugins on there. And then there's a separation between which plugins are supported by the folks at IX Systems, which do include some commercial ones like the Asigur Backup um, and a few other things. So it's nice to see which ones are supported by the IX Systems versus which ones are going to be supported by uh, the community. So this is a nice way they've separated that out. And these are the plugins I'm running in here. I have my Plex plugin and I have the paid version of Plex Pass. Sync thing and transmission because you have to see, you know, stuff for things. Uh, you know, those latest uh, distros that come out. I'm a big Linux guy, so um, been doing that. And this works perfectly fine. 
I have no problems uh, sync thing, works great. Not a problem here and uh, Plex Pass. Mm, everything's been working perfectly fine with these. No issues doing updates and such. And on this system, I will admit, running Plex on here, no, it's not going to do 4K. The processor does kind of limit it to that. Also, jails in general, I do for my home system, just like to keep a system running. So I have my Alcatraz jail right here uh, that I just keep running so I can SSH into it kind of on an as-needed basis. Now, mount points, a few people commented that they couldn't get mount points to work. I went and tested this. I'm going to do some new videos on the new jails because everything's on IO cage now versus the last time we did a jail video. Um, I believe it was Warden back then. So I'm going to do some new videos on IO cage, but I haven't had any problems with them. The uh, mounting and mapping all the data uh, to different places hasn't been an issue at all. Now, one other thing that I'm using in here that is really important is go over here to the block share iSCSI and yes I have a video on Steam that I set up on here now I have it working perfectly fine it has had no problems with both the upgrade to here and yes when I did the video I was still using my gaming system while well, my son's gaming system was still on Windows 7 because we hadn't gotten around upgrading it and uh, I am here to report that the Steam system works uh, perfectly well and I'm going to be doing a follow-up on that because one thing I thought about doing was go ahead and do a video like to follow up on it and do a video where I set up two system centers we put another gaming system together and I might store it on here as well now quick note iSCSI is not shared so I cannot share the Steam library with two systems simultaneously via iSCSI but I could create another iSCSI uh, system on here and share it out so that'll be a separate video I'll do. Also, um, despite this machine only having a very small amount of RAM, so we currently have right here ZFS cache, five gigs of it dedicated to caching. Now, this is an important distinction because even though I'm running Plex and those things because the Alvernon jails are relatively efficient because jails are essentially very containers running and sharing the same kernel inside of this BSD system. And... I still have great performance on it because so much of it gets cached. And this is what, especially because of the game usage that this has, uh, running the games on here is a lot of caching back and forth, pulling up the uh, assets for when you load into different levels and things like that. And being able to ask for those repeated access over iSCSI, uh, that gets cached and seems to be quite efficient running on there. All right. So as you can see, when it's not doing much, it's not streaming any movies because I'm here. Uh, it's perfectly fine to sit here idling at 3%. Now let's talk about this system, which is a little bit faster of a system. This has 32 gigs of RAM and we've got 26 gig uh, currently sitting in cache. What this does here is holds my virtual machines and all the video recordings that I do end up over here. So this system running perfectly fine. Uh, the only plugin I have on here, which not even really configured, I was just using it for testing, is the sync thing plugin that I have set up on here. And when you switch over to things, obviously, and refresh the indexes, it's way faster on this machine because this system has 24 threads and it's an Intel Xeon E52620. So a lot faster with 32 gigs of RAM. And then um, available space, The look at the drives itself. I got quite a few drives in here spread across uh, for just mostly just storage with some redundancy. I don't worry about, and I don't have a caching drive in here, RAID Z2 for some redundancy, but I don't have a caching drive because with 32 gigs, well, most stuff gets pushed into cache anyways on here, including the VMs that run in here, a bunch of small VMs I use for my lab demos and things like that that are on a combination of both NFS and iSCSI shares. Uh, so for those of you that always ask that question, both are working perfectly fine. And of course, that's an important distinction when you do the upgrade. Did you break any of these? No, everything worked perfectly fine, including the VLANs, I have set up. So I have 10 gig interface, 10 gig interface that just is dedicated to the storage network for my VMs and my X XEPNG machines that connect to this. And then a 10 gig interface for everything else that connects to it, which is really just my videos um, and random things that I throw on here uh, that our staff sometimes uses. But there's actually not any customer stuff on this particular system at all. We just don't keep it there. We have a, a different system for that. Um, other than that, I the shares have gone well. No problems setting those back up. The plugins migrated. I didn't rebuild them when I switched to the new version. Like I said, uh, the jails didn't have any problems. And I don't have, like I said, many on here. So my overall impression of 11.3 is it works great. The upgrades have gone very smooth. They haven't been a headache at all. Um, 
And even the betas were really smooth with this whole update. Now, as far as the interface polish, I do like the way they put the little hard drive pictures and pictures of the network interfaces on here. They did do a nice job of this because of this was something confusing previously where you could not see easily all the network summary pages or, for example, look at the global configuration of the network or just look at the network interfaces. So when you look at the interfaces, for example, you can see the physical, physical, and one VLAN set up. Now, someone said they didn't like this, that you have to expand this out each time. I really haven't had a problem with it. Uh, it, to me, seems perfectly fine, but I guess if you're looking through things, it is a little bit more tedious. And on that topic, I will show where, I guess, Maybe, and maybe someone's listening, maybe I'll file a bug report on here. So here's the different storage pools, and let's look at the snapshots I have for this. Well, I was curious, what's the biggest snapshot I have in here? And used to, you could just sort by that, and now those columns do seem to be gone, unless I'm you know, wrong under some other way to view them. I don't see a way to put that back, so I can't just sort by that. So if I want to know, all right, there's referenced 822 gigs here, and referenced here, but I have to expand each one out to figure it out. So 983 gigs versus there. And matter of fact, you can tell my son loaded a new game. So that's how much referenced on there. That's one thing about this running Steam on this. Um, he's moved a lot of his games over here and some of the new ones, but uh, each snapshot when there's no new games loaded, there's actually very little changed on any of these. So you're not using too much of the snapshots on there. But this is also nice in case something were tragically to happen to the Steam library. I have several weeks back, but it doesn't take much to keep that several weeks back. So my overall on the FreeNAS 11.3, it's great, a solid system. I will be doing a start to finish video on this soon. And of course, I'll do a dedicated one for permissions to sort that out for people and a dedicated one on jails because, well, I've been learning IOK and it's got some really cool features when you're playing with IO Cage. And I do like it a lot, but there are some, you know, nuances to how jails work. And I like to do an explainer on them because they're a really handy feature uh, to be able to pack a lot of power into FreeNAS. And I love that they got these community plugins, of course. So now we can expand upon that quite a bit more and dive into uh, seeing. I, I, maybe if I get real inspired, I'll figure out how to create a plugin myself because that would be kind of a fun challenge. I got to see if I can find time for that. All right, then. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.